Ha, now it goes down. Good, good evening. Welcome back to another video here from the off grid garage. The tester is running 24 seven now. I'm doing so many battery tests now. I think it is super interesting that we can have these curves on the screen here and we can run all kind of battery tests now here and the computer takes all the curves for us. But um, tonight I actually want to do something else. I actually wanted to do some bit of an experiment tonight. So, um, have a look at the Rust-P here, what it says. So we are discharging the battery at the moment with minus 3.3 amps. And if we go back to the pages, it shows us the minus 168, minus 174 watts. This is how much we discharge from the battery. And this all goes into the inverter. And then we've got the computer running, we've got the screen running, we've got this one running, we've got several other chargers running here, and we've got the lights on. Flicker-free lights. And this all in total is 174, 168, changes all the time watts right this is coming from the battery but look what the inverter says zero the inverter says zero and and i know about the difference between watts and volt amps okay we may have a transformer in here so this is an inductive load but still there is a good portion of a resistance load in here as well it's not 100 percent inductive load the same for the monitor. I'm sure it has an electronic power supply with an inductor in it and we have a good portion of the power consumed by the monitor as inductive load and resistive load. All these ones, they've got the same. Little bit of inductive and little bit of resistance. Computer the same, right? But still, should not the inverter show a little bit of what's coming from it? And even if we go in here, zero VA. See, there's nothing. This is VA. This should actually show us the inductive load as well. Zero, it says. Zero. And here in the VIM as well. Zero watts. Minus 168, minus 174. It changes between these two values. But zero watts. Isn't that strange? And then if I turn on the light here. Is this plugged in? No, it's not. Let's turn this one on all the way. Zero watts, zero watts, still nothing. Have a look in the Victron Connect. Phoenix Inverter Smart, zero watts. But I mean, clearly it's working, right? It's working. So it, it, it's producing electricity and we are actually now we're actually now at 205, 210 watts pulling out of the battery, but zero watts, nothing. Isn't that strange? Okay, so we have got now a continuous output of 158 watts here from the battery, minus three amps. And let me just turn on the, let me just turn on the main light. Oh, what do we have here? Look at this. Little froggy. What do you want in my garage? Need to rescue him and put him outside. Come on. It's a little green frog. Okay. Let's put him in the garden here, otherwise they are drying out and then die. All the best, froggy. So, and now with the fluorescence lights on, the battery, the smart shine, shows us we are discharging with 5 amps and we've got 288 watts now. And the inverter now shows 390 watts or 390 VA. I don't know why they are 
watts and VA here. There should be either or. They couldn't quite decide which unit to use, obviously. <laughs> I'm just writing these figures down now, otherwise I cannot remember. All right, I'm uh, going to replace these tubes now as well with the Osram substitute. substitute. And this is a 16 watt um, full LED, 4000K cool white, 30,000 hours non-mercury manual that's the one and then i want to see how much this has actually reduced from 283 down to something else all right here comes the big moment wow instant on uh, it's a bit of a different color. This is the bright white LED and this is more uh, cool white. A little bit more yellowish, but that's fine. At least it doesn't flicker anymore. Perfect, right? All flicker-free light now. Okay, let's have a look at the zero watts. 205 minus 3.9. So that saves me 99 watts, which is about correct. Because the normal tubes, they've got 36 and they've got 16. If we save 20 watts per tube times three, that should be 60 watts, but we're actually saving 99 watts. And the inverter still shows zero. Isn't that bizarre? This stupid inverter. Well, what do you think? How's the picture? Flicker-free light in the off-grid garage now. It's a bit more yellowish. Oh, I need to I need to turn this tube around here. There's this stripe with the LEDs. This needs to go up. Yeah, here, here you can see it. That's the stripe where the LEDs are mounted. And of course, this needs to go up. So the LEDs are shining down. Didn't pay attention with the first one. Yeah, isn't that bizarre? Well guys, two viewers have reminded in the comments <laughs> that we haven't installed the new BMS QUCC has sent me. I still got it here in my box and I have totally forgotten about it. We need to install this BMS. I'm still running the battery with a non-functional BMS. Well, it will not turn off. The relay is somehow melted together or not working anymore. We don't know yet, but we will find out. We will open the relay once we replaced it with this new one here with a big beefy relay. And um, apparently all the connections are the same. So I just need to disconnect the old one, put this one in place and reconnect the balance leads and then we are done. What I potentially will do is I will take off these cables here and use the ones which are connected to our battery because um, this saves me to go underneath and take the cables of the terminals and everything and then fiddle around with the balance leads again. This is, I think, a much easier approach just replacing these cables. I need to, yeah, I can, yeah, I can access this one easily too here. That is totally fine. Just an M, yeah, 13 millimeter socket. So the whole procedure shouldn't take very long. Need to turn off the battery, take the B minus and the C minus off here, put the other ones back on, plug in the balance leads, pair it with our app and we are done. Okay, in one of the next videos, we will do that. I've totally forgotten about this. The brand new BMS they sent me here. What a good service. So everyone has lost power now for the last 15, 20 minutes. And I think it's not coming back. Last night with a thunderstorm, we had about two hours, no power at all. So I'm going to run the cables now from here, from the garage, 
to the house so we can operate the pump we don't have any water <laughs> supply in the house at the moment so we can't take showers nothing there's nothing going on uh, I just hope I've got enough extension cables to plug them all into each other and extend to the house okay let's get started it's already late Okay, so I've got the 10 meter cable. I've got an, um, I've got an RCD plugged in here because it's raining and these are not weatherproof. So what I will do is I will take these um, old paint buckets there, these metal paint buckets and tip them over the connection here outside to protect the um, connections from, from the rain. And the Toby is scared by the thunder. Hmm? Are you scared? Okay, we've got a 10 meter cable here, which gets us out of the garage. And then I've got two 25 meter cables, 50 meters. And then we need to see what else we need up until the house, <laughs> somewhere in the dark. Everything is dark, the whole valley is dark. <laughs> Apart from the off quit garage. <laughs> nice. All right, let's start with this one. I'm sure once I've set up all the cables now and everything is working, the power comes back. Okay, this reaches up until here. And now the first 25 meter. What an adventure. And it's already 11 p.m. Here we go. And then Tip the bucket over like this, so it's protected from rain. Okay, so this is our water pump here. And we just need to take out this connection. And plug this in and the pump should actually start straight away. It does. <laughs> we've got power. <laughs> we've got no light, but we've got power on the pump. We've got running water, so I can take my shower. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Thanks to the off-grid garage. Hi, good morning kids. We all survived last night's thunderstorm. Nothing happened. Still got the cable running until this morning to supply the pump with power. This all worked very well, so I'm impressed. <laughs> they can actually make it with three extension cables back to the house. Well, two of them are enough to reach everything at the house, inside the house. So the power came back two and a half hours later. About 400 households had no power last night, it said on the website. I didn't have time to finish this video this morning, so I'm just glad the tester and the computer kept running because these tests are taking so long. You don't want to start them again. <laughs> well, anyway, this was actually a good test to run parts of the house uh, from the off-grid garage here, from the battery and everything. So this is probably another goal in the future to connect more and more parts of the house as well to the off-grid garage battery here. I mean, the pressure pump at the house is only a 700 watt pump, 700 VA. It's not even watts. And because we have tank water here on the property, we need a pressure pump to supply the house with water. Well, and if you don't have power, you're lost. But then during the day, I thought about how much power would I actually need to run parts of the house or even the whole house from a battery? And how big does the inverter need to be? I mean, we've got induction cooktops, so they are fairly efficient. Microwave, coffee machine, fridge, freezer, washing machine, dishwasher, vacuum cleaner, hair dryer. 
<laughs> these are probably the main big loads I have in the house from what I can think of but they don't they don't need to run at the same time of course we probably need about seven eight nine kilowatt of peak power supplying the house you can work around it if you know you've got a power limit of course you can run the dishwasher and the washing machine later I can charge the car during the night when no other power is needed inside the house. But especially when making dinner, you have some of the appliances running at the same time, you know. But definitely I would need a different inverter, probably a second one. I keep this one here for the garage and then we've got a bigger one running the house and probably a third one for charging the car or something, you know. But such an event like a power outage gets you thinking, how can you prevent this from happening, you know? Well, because imagine the whole valley here, all the 400 homes are pitch black, little bit of light shine here and there, but here on the property, full light, you know? Music playing, TV is playing, all the lights are on, no problem at all, because it's the off-grid garage. Yeah, that's definitely something to start thinking about. So should you get one big inverter with 10 kilowatts, say? Or should you get multiple smaller ones who supply only single parts of your property? Or even the ones you can combine, you know, you start with a three or four kilowatt inverter. And then if you, if this is not enough, or if you have more load after a while, you just add another one and they, they work together then on, on your loads. So this is all something, this is all possible, you know. So how do you, how do you plan and, and um, organize and, and proceed with such a plan to supply a whole house with an inverter. It's a very interesting topic just to think about. Anyway guys, I found it already impressive to run the pressure pump at the house here from the off-grid garage with three extension cables plugged into each other. And it worked! It worked! We could have our shower and everything was fine. So, quite impressive. Glad I came up with this idea <laughs> and run the cables to the house and supplied the pump with free green solar power here. Nice. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here. Stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again in the next video when we finalize the West Roof installation. This, this will be the final stage for a while. And then we have so much solar on the West Roof already, which maxes out our solar charge controller. So this is all I can install at the moment on the West Roof. And the video is coming out. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching again. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye. Ah, before you go, before you go, have a look at this screenshot here I took last night when we had the um, thunderstorm and lightning uh, coming over this area here. You could actually see the solar panels produced. Um, a little bit of voltage there, up to 30 volts I could measure at one point, or the, the Raspi. So that is insane, right? 30 volts. There was no amps or something flowing, but I mean 30 volts just from lightning. That's how intense it was last night. We had lightning, lightning, lightning. It was daylight outside. Very spooky. Okay, guys, thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye-bye.